so excited about this. The plan is aligned for our next guest. He's a science rock star, a pop culture icon, one of the smartest men in the world. And he has agreed to come and speak with us. We don't know why, but we are very excited. He's sharing his wisdom with everyone in his Emmy Award winning show, Cosmos. If you haven't seen it, you have to. Possible worlds helping make sense of the universe and our place in it. We are talking none other than Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> we have been so excited for you to join us. Okay, before we get to your wait, new wait, show. Wait, wait, first, what do you okay. mean you don't know why? I grew up with Channel 11, okay? Uh, did did just, you? Just, just That's, you grew let up that Bronx. be known. Okay, born and raised in the Bronx, so yeah. you're, you, I feel like you're family. Just All right, so well, you know. we're going to call you family, and you know that. We're going to put that on our <laughs> resume, in fact. Um, can we talk to you just a little bit about the Hayden Planetarium? Because it was shut down due to COVID, right? And it reopened a few weeks ago. How does it feel to be back? Well, so no, the museum opened, but we yeah. still closed our theaters. Right. And so there's an IMAX theater, there's some small uh, other venues where people had gathered closely. So we're still holding back on that until we get higher level clearance um, from, and we're in close communication with other museums so that we have sort of best practice for our visitors. But we're a large museum with very yeah. large halls. Yes. And so we, we cordoned off a few of the things that are touch screen and that sort of thing. And people were very appreciative of that actually. And so I think we're doing very well. We've been open now for uh, two or three weeks. Right. And with a reduced, um, you know, reduced yeah, of course, uh, rate capacity. of people, capacity, I should say, yes. So, um, but the museum is still there. It's a beloved. I mean, I went there when I was a kid. Uh, my first night sky was the Hayden Planetarium. Right. And it's a little weird that I'm now like the director of it. Well, <laughs> it's awesome. But at the same time, I bet it was everyone's first night sky in New York because we don't have a relationship exactly. with the night sky. It's true. With um, buildings and pollution and lights and, 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 you know, all that prevents a person from communing with the cosmos. Right. I was listening to you on a podcast recently. You were on Smartless, and it was amazing to hear you talk about the stars, right? Mm -hmm. And by the t and this is true. I don't know. It just remind me. If it, by the time a star actually reaches us and being able to see it, has that star already died? Well, for some, that's true. Okay. So, but stars live a long time so how, here's an example the two of you are separated looks like about eight ten feet okay mm -hmm. so you don't see each other as you are you see each other as you were 10 billionths of a second ago oh wow you're not worrying it, it, it she's wow. still alive <laughs> because she lives much longer than the time that has elapsed Hopefully. since, the, since yeah. the light travel time so most stars their distance is not so large that they're probably dead. No, only some of them, the ones that don't live very long, they have surely died. And by the way, that information that they've died is en route, right? Yes. So you see the star thinking it's a normal star and then bam, the there star explodes, but it exploded a thousand years ago. And that's why we love you, because you break it down in terms that we can understand, because it can be really far out, uh, literally, uh, for us to be able to far grasp out and, and all above of our heads. Yeah, yes, above head. exactly. <laughs> uh, but speaking of space, I, I got to ask a question. A lot of people want to know. I mean, are we the only life forms out there, or are there indeed aliens? And I'm not talking about like amoeba and little bitty pieces of life. I'm talking well, about. Why were you got against amoeba? <laughs> if it's microbes on another planet, it's alien life. What are, what are, I, I, but I'm you're talking being about very species intellectual life. We're talking about a UFO because you know yeah. there was this these folks the other day in New Jersey thought they looked up, they thought they saw a UFO, and so I was looking at your quotes once, and you said perhaps that's because never been... it's in New Jersey. Well, hey, do not smack New Jersey. <laughs> so, there it is. Yes, there it is. look at the UFO. This? You once said we were never visited by by aliens because they maybe looked upon Earth and decided there's no sign of intelligent life. So do you not exactly. believe in aliens? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, no. So, uh, okay, what the what the video right there is like the famous Tic Tac video. Uh, this is a fuzzy object and monochromatic uh, video recording from an F-18 fighter pilot um, for the Navy. Okay, so I, I, for, for my where I'm coming from, do you realize how many photos and videos of high resolution are uploaded to the internet every day? Six billion. I just checked with someone from Google. Wow. Six Billion, and you're telling me your best evidence of an <laughs> alien visiting from another planet is fuzzy monochromatic Navy video? Excuse me, I, I need, give me something better than that. You know so what, if though? anyone would have seen it, it would have been you, right? Or those who searched the stars. 
I, I well, yeah. So, by the way, my, my my people, you know, we look up all the time, and we also have a pretty good sense of the things that can fool you. The, mm. they were, you know, for example, Venus was once in the evening sky. Mm -hmm. Okay, but a, a police a, a cruiser thought he was chasing a UFO, <laughs> a UFO crossing back and forth <laughs> across, it, and he said, "I'm on the hot but you know, uh, you know, calling it in." And, so, and it turns out, it turns out he was on a curvy road. And so he thought <laughs> that a UFO was crossing back and forth that he was chasing. And so the mind is not the best data taking device right. that's out there. That's but, why we have science, right? Yes. So, Trust so, in so science. I, I would love to meet the aliens. Don't get well, me wrong. Right? I no, hope they don't visit Comic-Con. Apparently, you, all, you only have to go to New Jersey, my friend, right. to see them, all right? So I, I want to talk about the third season of the show, Cosmos, because it was, it's such an impressive show. It was originally hosted by Carl Sagan back in 1980. Mm -hmm. So obviously, there's so many – we have so many questions for you. Obviously, so many people interested in this, right? Yeah. I mean, the universe, yeah. Do we – and you know, you, I wanted to talk about the one thing you said, too, that the good thing about um, science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. And yeah, so, so that's the that's the quip version of a, a longer, sort of more fleshy statement, which is science establishes what is objectively true in the world, mm. and you do that by repeated measurements that are consistent with each other, and you say, okay, we have a new result, and here it is, you put it in the books, and you're good with that. In science, when on the frontier, we, what can happen is you it can extend that understanding. OK, so generally when we're fighting about things, it's about some new idea that might or might not extend what is already established. And so so Earth goes around the sun. Earth is round. Right. Mm. No. Round. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going to bring in the whole crew. Yes. One last question, though, before we let you go. How in the okay. world are you coming to us from outer space right now without mm. an astronaut suit on? Oh, oh, How is but, this possible? You know, the universe follows me. It doesn't yeah. follow. This was wherever I go. That's where. <laughs> you know, how do you feel, by the way, there's this rumor that you could be taken over for Jeopardy? Yeah. Oh, you know, I would love to do that in a, like a parallel universe because, you know, who's not a fan of Jeopardy, particularly in my world in which I grew up where knowledge was valued. Yeah. OK, so uh, uh, Alex Trebek, in a way, is kind of a patron saint of, ner of nerds. So but I just I I'm I'm, do I'm doing astrophysics. I can't just become a, a game show host. So it's <laughs> so not going to happen. You're life, telling sure. us it's, it's, it's not going to happen. No, no, it was true that it was a rumor, but it's not oh. true that that is it's, real, right? Okay. It's a tr right, but it's not, it's not real, no. Maybe. All right. I, I love the show. I've been a clue. I've even been a clue. I know. I, I, and I've oh, read da Daily Double Clues, and my name has been one of the clues. You're so a rock I, I star. Connected. I mean, from Bronx High School of Science to Jeopardy, and now the universe follows you. I mean, come on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson, what a pleasure yes, it has been. Thank you. To have you today. <laughs> Please, 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 please come back. Yes. Uh, okay. No, thank you. You know how to reach me, and I'm here, yes. and and I'm local, so I'm, I, I'm easy. Don't you worry. I'm gonna come find you. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Security. You. I'm in the universe. I'm in the universe. Uh, okay. I'm looking forward to your your new season too. Cosmos airs on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Thank you, thank yes, you, thank, thank you so you. much for hanging out you with us it. this morning, guys.